time will come, I know. I do all I want on the safe and home. They leave their home and go at first and far away at second. But soon they will be rounding third. We know what they're expecting. To smell and taste their favorite dish, you know they're on their way. I do all. Sweet home, the ending to a day. I do, I want them safe at home. Now in this precious land of ours and blessed oceans wide with foam, a fundamental of the soul is to be safe at home, safe at home. They shouldn't have to worry, they shouldn't have to fear. I do, I them especially here I do I want them safe and home they leave their home and go at first and far away at second they're dying to be rounding third we know what they're expecting to smell and feel their favorite dish to know they're on their way I do I Tell me to look deep inside. You tell me we can beat them. Yeah, hope and faith are easy to have, except for when you need them. You tell me we can win this thing. You tell me to believe.
He was just a little boy, about four years old. The biggest fight that he should face, the wind and a cold. But a battle of severe's came his innocent way. A group of heroes by him. Just to play ball, to feel the grass, just to roll, to run the bases, heading for home. Raised with support, he sang the spangled tune. Hollywood had to catch. The magic afternoon with breathless feet, they worked hard each day. Some fell with sunshine, some for golden grain. To be happy where they go to run. I do. I wanna stay back home. To feel the joy that's in their heart. To savor all their fun. I do. I wanna stay back home. I can't control the world or wherever they will go. I do. I wanna stay back home. It's natural. For them to fly, the time will come, I know. I do, 
a pretty scene against a perfect summer sky. We came around the bend and saw a sight, a sight to behold. Serene as the Garden of Eden, a symphony of green and gold. It's the smell of the grass, it's the feel of the dirt, it's the mustard dripping down a little boy's shirt. It's the rhythm, it's the music, and it's always been the same. It's the beat we feel inside us, it's the heart of the game. It's the heart, it's the heart of the game. Off the pike we turned and passed the dodge along the way. A thousand moms and dads, it seemed, had gathered on this day. Blue and yellow, pink and purple, just like a county fair. Cheers and laughter, smell of charcoal. Cream dripping down, a little girl's shirt. It's the rhythm, it's the music, and it's always been the same. It's the pain we feel inside us, it's the heart of the game. It's the heart, it's the heart of the game. Over by the Susquehanna, breezes whisper the truth. Tales of all the boys and girls believe in dreams come true. Follow the river up to the village where they say it all began. Again we found the Garden of Eden, a symphony of green and tan. Over by the Susquehanna, breezes whisper the truth. Tales of all the men and women who learned that dreams come true. the grass, it's the feel of the dirt, it's the mustard dripping down, a businessman's shirt, it's the rhythm, it's the music, and it's always been the same, it's the beat you feel inside us, it's the heart of the game, it's the heart, it's the heart of the game, it's the heart, it's the heart of the game. Thank you is to tell you what you've been to our lives. 
Well, folks, welcome into our second weekly Paw Sox baseball simulation. Today, we're going to see the game that was regularly scheduled to be played here on the 16th of April. It would have been at McCoy Stadium, and it would have ended up the week opening homestand had we been able to play real baseball. So we're going to do the best we can, and we bring you International League Baseball action virtually here on a late Thursday afternoon. It's the Buffalo Bisons taking on the Pawtucket Red Sox, and we welcome you into our Twitch broadcast. This is the Paw Sox broadcast team. My name is Josh Mauer, joined by my new partner this year, Mike Antonellis, and my returning partner this year, Jim Kane. We've got a fun broadcast coming up again today for you folks. So guys, this would have been the matchup at McCoy. The Bisons, the Blue Jays AAA affiliate, taking on the Paw Sox. And Mike, let me start with you. We're going to watch Brian Johnson virtually pitch this afternoon. And, and Brian's a very interesting case for the Red Sox this year. Yeah, certainly is, Josh, because he was taken off the 40-man roster. But then the Red Sox needing starting pitching, and he's a guy that has done that before. He was a good candidate to crack that five. Jim, meanwhile, for this Buffalo team, they've got one of the top pitching prospects in the sport scheduled to pitch for them in this game. His name is Nate Pearson, a former first-round pick. Yeah, Josh, and this is a guy who last year spent time at three different levels of the minor league system of the Blue Jays, high A, double A, and triple A, really burst onto the scene, and he's going to be a tough matchup here today for the Paw Sox. Well, folks, that is the rundown for our game. Johnson and Pearson, Buffalo, visiting Pawtucket. We're playing, by the way, today's simulation at Center City Field. McCoy Stadium was not quite available for this MLB The Show game. However, we're going to take you now over to virtual McCoy Stadium and send it to public address announcer of the Paw Sox, Ben DeCastro. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Today, from this empty ballpark, we would like to take a moment to share some thoughts. We wish you were here with your family, enjoying a beautiful day, laughing together, and making memories. We wish that there were players on the field fulfilling their childhood dreams while inspiring young athletes in the stands. But for now, we simply can't. We hope that it won't be long, but we understand that the best way we can all combat the rapid spread of this virus is to diligently practice social distancing. We would like to take a moment to thank those who are working tirelessly to care for those who have been affected by this virus, as well as those working hard to find the treatment and cure. To the doctors and nurses at all the medical facilities around the country and around the world, thank you. To environmental, dietary, engineering, security, and administrative staff at those facilities, thank you. To our first responders, police, fire, and EMS, thank you. To our armed services and National Guard, thank you. To those who continue serving to keep our country, the land of the free, and the home of the brave, and their families enduring these unprecedented times here at home, thank you. To our government leaders and teams working together with the single goal of flattening the curve, thank you. To the restaurants, businesses, and organizations, who have adjusted the way they operate in order to continue to provide goods and services to our community, thank you. To those companies who are working to provide supplies that will increase the survival rate and decrease the spread, thank you. To all the teachers, educators, who are working so hard to continue educating the next generation, thank you. To the moms, dads, and relatives who are perhaps stepping into new roles or extending themselves in ways they never thought possible to simply provide a sense of normalcy and balance, thank you. We encourage all of you, everyone, to keep checking in on each other. 
Make comments each day to connect, whether by phone or video chat, with those whom you simply cannot visit them. We know that brighter days are on the horizon. When this fog clears and the sun shines once again, we seek to welcome you with open arms as you sing, Take Me Out to the Ball Game, and most poignantly, Take Me Out to the Press. Until then, please continue to stay safe at home. Time for you to enjoy the national anthem. We take it back to a, a day, a bright day at McCoy Stadium before we started going through all these trials and travails. Let's listen back as Nicole Michelle entertained us with the national anthem. Mm -hmm. during that anthem like Dustin Pedroia and Raphael Devers. Josh, Jim, and Mike with you here. You know, guys, there is one tradition we've had for the last few years at McCoy that has happened in every single game before the Paw Sox took to the field for the first inning, and that was the playing of our anthem for the Pawtucket Red Sox. Let's hear Dr. Charles Steinberg's anthem, Paw Sox Baseball.
spring the crack of the bat the whoosh of the swing warmth of summer golden twilight my favorite team never gives up the fight it's a fun tradition it's more than a fling to catch a rising star and to win a baseball here our second weekly Paw Sox Thursday five o'clock start virtually here on Twitch Josh Mauer Jim Kane Mike Antonellis with you the Paw Sox are about to take the field behind Brian Johnson and let's take a, a gander at the Buffalo lineup that they're going to be facing and Mike I'll turn to you for this this is a Bison's order in which we've seen a lot of these guys coming through Buffalo and up to Toronto back and forth quite a bit over the last few years. Anthony Alford leads off. He's one of those guys. But I'm going to focus on a guy who's batting third, Rowdy Telez, a guy who hit 21 home runs in the major leagues last season. Yeah, and he's had a lot of success by coincidence against the Red Sox. Hit seven of his home runs last year. And I think Toronto's done a great job with position players. And now they're bringing in some older guys like Tejada, guys we'll see in the lineup tonight, Caleb Joseph. They're hoping that this next wave of pitching can spark because we've seen the position players go up there, Josh, and there's some in this lineup that are good. And I'll tell you one guy to look for. Jonathan Davis might be one of the best defensive outfielders in the game right now. Oh, he was Mr. Web Gem last year in the big leagues. All right, Jim, let's take a look at the Paw Sox lineup. We've got Chad De La Guerra in there. He didn't play in the virtual game at Fenway last week. It's good to see Chad, and he'll be in the leadoff spot. Yeah, it's certainly good to see Chad atop that Pawtucket order. And you know, Josh, it's a shame that he had those injury problems last year, battled a wrist issue and a couple of other ailments throughout the course of the year. But when he was out in the field, he was very productive. He was a very good hitter. And I'm excited to see if we do resume baseball at some point this year, him have a healthy and full season. So those are your lineups, and we're just about set for baseball here. This game is being virtually played at a virtual ballpark, Center City Field. By the way, according to the interweb, this ballpark opened in 1928. Look at that warehouse out in right field. It's a beautiful late afternoon for a game. There's Josh Ockamy getting in a few final stretches the Paw Sox will get ready for this game against Buffalo. As we told you at the outset, Brian Johnson is on the bump for manager Billy McMillan. Well, Mike, you were talking about Johnson and the chance that he has to potentially win one of the starting spots for the Red Sox if and when they do play real baseball this year off of the 40-man roster this offseason. But you get injuries to guys like Chris Sale and the opportunities abound there. So here yeah, we go. He's... Jonathan D or Anthony Alford takes strike one. I'm sorry, Mike. No, you're right. Just uh, the Chris Sale injury really opened the door and the talking of, of having openers. You'd think he'd qualify. Well, this is a guy who pitched in 21 major league games last season. Battled injuries on and off throughout his career. That ball hit him, came inside, and caught a piece of the speedy, very athletic Anthony Alford. Looks like he got him just below the forearm, guys. So not the way that 
Mr. Johnson was hoping to start this game. And here comes Forrest Wall, former first-round pick of the Colorado Rockies. And if that was an actual swing, Josh, it would not have been a hit-by-pitch. Forrest Wall had his first full season in the Blue Jays system last year. And Brian Johnson has had problems holding base runners. It's been, Jim, I know one of the things that the Red Sox have asked Brian to work on, really, for years, is try to slow down the opposing running game. Josh, it's interesting. Johnson, in his tenure, do a lot. And the thing that comes to mind for me is, how he's gone back and forth between being a starter and a reliever. That ball blooped into left center. What a catch, Nick Wongi. Oh, put a star next to that one. For a man that is just new to the Pawtucket Red Sox in left, Nick Wongi. A full Superman dive. That's pretty. Talk about giving up your body. Helps out. Johnson has offered and retreated to first base. Well, and he played the outfield with the Reds because of Joey Votto in the big leagues, so they wanted him to go from first to the outfield, and he's done a good job there. Now it's Telez. The runner is off, and the throw from Centeno got him. How about that? Juan Centeno, and we were talking about Brian Johnson's issues holding base runners. This situation worked out perfectly for Pawtucket. It sure did. And how about the throw from Centeno against what you guys pointed out was a speedy base runner in Alford. Just like that, you get two terrific defensive plays. One from the left fielder and then one by the catcher, and there's two outs. You like to see Telez and his big bat hitting with the bases empty. As you You take a look at the top right-hand corner of your screen. We'll be featuring some of our great Paw Sox corporate partners throughout this Twitch broadcast here this afternoon. Telez, as the count go, even two balls and two strikes. And we're going to be having fun with you. We'll call this as, as if it were a game being played at McCoy Stadium. But we'll also try to interact with the fans, take some of your questions later on. We'll talk about everything going on. That fly ball caught by Zue Lind. So it's nothing, nothing with Pawtucket coming to bat. And let's have a message coming to you from Paw Sox first baseman, Josh Akami. Paw Sox fans, uh, this is first baseman, Josh Akami. Uh, my nose has been crazy the past couple of weeks with this pandemic going on. But uh, I just want to say, you know, continue to be safe. Uh, continue to be patient. Baseball will be back in no time. Well, thanks so much, Ock. He'll be due up fifth here in the bottom of the first inning against that man, Nate Pearson. And I'll tell you what, guys, this, this is one of the most big, high-profile pitching arms in minor league baseball these days. 23-year-old, former first-round pick of the Blue Jays, and he's battled some injuries, but he is right on the cusp of the major leagues. Certainly is. I mean, he's got that build, and he can chuck it. I mean, fastball, that slider is deadly as well. De La Guerra, then Chatham, and Dahlbeck. Jim, you were talking about Chad De La Guerra as we talked about the Postdoc starting lineup. Chad, when he was healthy last year, was really an integral part of the offense. Josh, it was a guy that you could plug it. A lot of different positions, mainly in the middle infield spots, but even as a DH, too, his bat plays. And, again, when he was out there, he swung it extremely well. Having a hit from the ball coming from sunlight into dark shadow. Never easy for the batters, especially when the pitcher is throwing 97, which is what Pearson's been at with his last two fastballs. Ooh, boy, was that close. Two and two. Look at this crowd at fictitious center city field <laughs> it looks like a field i'd, I'd want to go to though i, I kind of like this ballpark yeah i like that warehouse looking right field that's in there got him looking 
And that is the big arm for Nate Pearson that we spoke about. De La Guerra unable to get his bat off the shoulder, Mike. Yeah, look at some of the highlights from the Futures game. And all Pearson did with those great hitters was say, here's number one. And they could. Now it's C.J. Chatham. There's the slider from Nate Pearson. Guys, it's interesting because last year, and especially at the beginning of the year, this Bison's team was stacked with positional players, highlighted by Vlad Jr. and, of course, Bo Bichette. So they clearly are stacked when it comes to positional prospects. They've been kind of thin when it comes to pitching. And to have a guy like Pearson really burst onto the scene, that's a great development for the Blue Jays. Well, I remember, Jim, you and I calling a game in April of 2019 where it seemed like one of those guys, whether it was Kevin Biggio, Bo Bichette, or especially Vlad Jr., seemed like every inning they were doing something special. And of course, all three of them made it up to the big leagues pretty quickly. And the thing, too, Josh, is that especially with Guerrero and his power, we talked about, you know, last week we, we said Bobby Dahlbeck. When he makes contact, it's just a different sound. It was a different sound when Guerrero connected. To the first baseman, that's Tolez. He needs the help of Pearson. Ended up being a nice at-bat there for C.J. Chatham. But in the end, retired 3-1, to one, as we remind you what the Paw Sox starting nine looks like. Two up, two down for Pearson. And here comes Bobby Dahlbeck. It's kind of McCoy-esque, right? The press box. Yeah kind of does look like it. It reminds me too a bit of Durham Bulls Athletic Park down in the IL South. Well, guys, last year in a game in August, a real game, I should say, Nate Pearson did make one of his very few AAA starts against Pawtucket. And that was a game back on the 25th of August. He gave up two runs in six innings, and the two runs came courtesy of Bobby Dahlbeck. Hit a two-run homer. Hmm. Tried to do it again there. These are the best matchups, right, guys? Power, power. Fun to watch. And I remember how impressive the line drive homer Dahlbeck was off of Pearson last year. Tried to do it again this time. He'll ground out to the shortstop, Ruben Tejada. So we're through one in a scoreless game. And, folks, I'm going to tell you about our friends at the Rhode Island Department of Health. Spring is here, and that means our boys of summer wish they could shower you with a host of family memories. But while we wait together, the Paw Sox want to thank some of the unsung heroes of our community. The good people who work at the grocery stores like Dave's Marketplace, Shaw's, and Stop and Shop, who make sure we are only taking two packages. We thank you for performing a task we don't always remember to thank you for. Especially now, we appreciate you and your role with our roles. That message courtesy of the Rhode Island Department of Health. So we're headed to the second inning. Second weekly virtual Thursday evening game. And here's Mike Hansen. All right, Josh, thanks a lot. Cullen Large takes a ball. He has very limited upper-level experience, just 24 games last year in A. Johnson... Had a scoreless first, and he'll get the first out of the second on a fly ball to right. Caught by Rusne Castillo in the sunshine. Take a look at the defense. defensively for Pateka. Yeah, it's Longy. You've already seen him make the highlight reel catch in left. But good range in center from Lynn. Rusne Castillo, Mr. Reliable in right field. We've become so accustomed to seeing him patrol that grass. Generally at McCoy. Josh Palacio, the DH, takes a strike. Now, he's a lot like Large. No AAA experience. And then they have Caleb Joseph on deck, which many know that name from his years catching with Baltimore. So Brian Johnson, will he be with the Red Sox when baseball returns? And he's quickly ahead 0-2. It's a very interesting story, guys. He gets taken off the 40-man, but a chance to go right back on it. That yeah, one slapped over the head of the shortstop, so a base hit. Longy plays it in the gap, and we'll hold Palacios. Well, he'll get a double here with one out. 
Good Hustle by Josh Palacios, an Auburn product. Lefty against lefty and slapping one the opposite way. But I think you're right, Mike. It's a huge question mark, really, below Eduardo Rodriguez and Nathan Avaldi for Boston. New pitching coach Dave Bush going to have to figure it out. You figure Martin Perez is going to be in that mix. Ryan Weber, as spring training was going on in Fort Myers, had really stepped into a role potentially in that starting five. But other than that, you know, those are names that we're not accustomed to seeing for the Boston Red Sox in their rotation. And I think Johnson probably had as good a chance as any to claim fifth spot with Chris Sale's injury. Uh, yeah, I agree. I think uh, Perez is a huge wild card. I mean, if he has a good year, that's. Uh, I mean, they need somebody to really step it up. There's a strike to Caleb Joseph, a veteran, a good backstop. And Toronto really brought him in to mentor some of their younger players, and that is Bloop to the first baseman and Akami with an easy catch. So two outs for Ruben Dejada. Well, and think about it too, Jim. I mean, last season, even as the Red Sox struggled some, they had guys like Rick Porcello, of course, Chris Sale, big names who are no longer an option for the 2020 season to be in the big league starting rotation. You got to plug those holes somehow. Hey, you took the words right out of my mouth, Josh. I mean, there are holes to fill, and it was surprising to see Johnson come off the 40-man. I'm sure he was surprised as well, but I think he has a great chance to not only make the team, but be in the rotation. And even another guy, too, could see Kyle Hart, who we saw pitch in our opening day anyway simulation last week. Maybe he'll fill one of those spots, too, for Boston. The strike and of course, on a curveball. Mike, I left off David Price's name. Yeah. Now it feels like somewhat of a distant memory two outs to the inning and that's low and you know what's going to happen guys with what's going on right now it is going to create an opportunity for a kyle hart because you're going to need some extra bodies you know what they say you can never have too much pitching i've been saying it for years right yeah generally See, if you think you have only enough you don't have what you're going to need you yeah you need I more than enough yeah, you need three or four guys in AAA that can come up. Here's a great view there, the home plate umpire. Palacios is at second here. Johnson trying to get out of this, and it looks like he might. It's hit to left. Oh, diving attempt by Longy, but he can't come up with it, and Buffalo has the first run of tonight's simulation. Tejada, a veteran. Yeah, he got two hitting. Got something up in the zone. We saw Longy make a catch diving in the first inning. That time it just clips off his glove. Score that an RBI hit for 30-year-old Ruben Tejada. Good dive. He just couldn't squeeze it. They had a breaking ball, a strike to Jonathan Davis. I mean, Davis had some catches last year against the Rays that were unbelievable. This guy, he is a sprinter and fun to watch. It's fun to watch defense, right, guys? There is. This guy, I, he can go whether he's jumping over the wall, crashing into it, as he pops one up here, or just diving inwards and giving up his body on the grass. I don't know that I have seen a guy make a plethora of catches like Davis did in 2015. Outstanding. So Buffalo with a one nothing lead as we move to the bottom of the second inning. On that. All right, guys. Rusne Castillo, Josh Ockamy, Jansen Witte, four, five, six against the hard throwing Nate Pearson, and a changeup in there for a strike. So even in this simulation, guys, you see Pearson, a hard thrower, go to a changeup to a power hitter. And that one's upstairs to Rusne. Guys, he has 99 games in the big leagues, Castillo. How about that? Yeah, but none since his first couple of years after signing the big contract. We've just seen so much of Rusne playing at McCoy. 
into foul territory. Telez makes the catch. Ruzne would be a very interesting 30 for 30 someday, wouldn't he? <laughs> he really would. And, you know, there have been a number of stories done on him, one recently in Sports Illustrated toward the tail end of last year. And, you know, no matter who you talk to in the Pawtucket organization, everyone's got great things to say about Ruzne and his attitude. Akami hits it to deep right field. This one is a chance. It is up. It is up. And Josh Akami has hit a home run, and he knew it. Look at that. 418 feet. Exit velocity of 104 miles per hour. And power. Josh won that one. Wow. And he went after that pitch almost like he knew what was coming. Akami, he's a guy where the ball just absolutely jumps off his bat that's a great shot too yeah jim you've seen a lot of them of course i mean he's got we talk about dahlbeck's power he's right there with him it really is mike and it's a guy who when he's cold he goes pretty cold but when he gets hot there aren't many guys that can get hotter than him i remember times talking to rich getman about josh Akami. Rich, of course, the longtime Paw Sox hitting coach. And he said he thinks sometimes Akami can be too patient. Takes a lot of pitches. He works so many deep counts. I think Getty was probably happy to see him swinging early against a guy like Pearson. And the results just spoke for themselves. So a 1-1 game. Jansen Witty now the batter. Mike Antonella is getting a short break here in our Twitch broadcast. And Witty, the ever-steady Paw Sox infielder. Going to the right side, a play for Telez. Two outs. So a 1-1 game. Each team with a run here in the virtual second inning. And Zue Lin coming up to the plate. Gosh, I know we talked about nice it last week, but these guys in this game are incredible. Even the batting stances. I mean, that's almost identical to Zue's real stance. It's yeah, This game is unbelievable how much they have replicated everything. And Lynn behind. It, it has you think, guys, what's going to happen in another 20 years with technology? I was thinking about it and seeing all the players who have been represented playing this game since the stoppage. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank goodness that this MLB The Show was around and created for a situation like this, right, Mike? Yeah. Thank goodness for Josh Ockamy. It's 1-1 one, one after 2 here at Center City Field. You know, guys, like, yep. oh, go ahead, Mike. I was just going to say, if people want to talk to us in the chat and Twitch, we'll talk. Uh, take those questions after the fifth inning. Yeah. Definitely keep writing in there. As you can see on your screen, this is what the Twitch chat looks like at the moment. Again, after the fifth inning, we'll get to questions. But how about this? Somebody asked if any of the three of us play baseball. So as we turn it over to Jim Kane, I, I think he is the one person who can say he has accomplished some level of real baseball. <laughs> I don't know if accomplished is the right word, Josh Maurer, but I did play through college at Emerson College in downtown Boston, along with a couple other members of our front office. Tim Kodadamo, our manager of Paw Sox Productions, was my outfield mate back in the day. And Joe Jacobs, too, in the middle infield, our director of Paw Sox Productions. We move along to the top half of the third inning. 1-1 game, Brian Johnson deals a strike into the number nine man, 
Santiago Espinal. All fouls it off right hand side, and Johnson ahead 0 and 2. What was your career batting average at Emerson, Jim? Oh, maybe we can talk about it off the air, Josh. And <laughs> Espinal grounds to the right side. Akami takes it himself for the first out of the inning. Well, we can search that, right? Pretty easily. I'm, I'm sure a lot of the, people the could. Internet, Absolutely. That's available. <laughs> the internet is not very good at keeping secrets. No. Let's try to keep it a secret as long as we possibly can on our end. And now Anthony Alford leading. Or the number one man in the lineup takes the ball upstairs. Guys, I got to say, these are the Postdocs uniforms from a few years back. They aren't the current ones, but I really like the hats with the sky blue on the top and the navy blue brim. I agree. Really good look. Nice play by Akami and a good feed to Johnson covering for the putout. Boy, Akami's doing a bit of everything here. It's the home run last inning. And how about this? The last four putouts for Pawtucket have been by their first baseman, Akami, including both of them this inning. Forest Wall takes downstairs as you take a look at a great shot there from the Buffalo on deck circle. We've got virtual cameras everywhere. Hold off left hand sign and it's one and two. So Jim's pump up song before a game was in the air tonight by Phil Collins. According that to was my that was my walk up song in fact. Yeah, it's going with a classic for walking up to the batter's <laughs> box. <laughs> Followed up by a Wall, still one and two. Well, good for Jim. I played through high school. Jim's got us all beaten, and awesome that you played through college. On the ground, left side, nice play by Johnson off the mound, and he throws out Wall for the final out. Some good defense that inning from Pawtucket, from Johnson and from Akami. Through two and a half, we are tied at one. Bottom half of the third inning coming your way. Nick Longy to lead it off for Pawtucket. It's eight, nine, and one in the order. Longy followed by Juan Centeno and then the leadoff man, Chad De La Guerra. Ninety-nine you see there from Pearson. I mean, I know it's a video game, but it, we know what he's like in real life, and this guy's got great stuff as you see a slider. Or a changeup that misses down and away. Now that's where he's so good. He goes in and then away, but it's nothing is soft out of his hand. It's hard. The slider, the changeup. You know, I think the Blue Jays guys have to be pretty excited about what they've got put together up there north of the border these days. We talked about the Guerrero, Biggio, Bichette youngsters who made it up to the show last year. And there are some arms that are coming that way pretty soon from this triple a team this guy nate pearson tj zoik yes another former first round pick he pitched a hitter last year for buffalo at, at the triple a level at that put on here by nick longy to begin the bottom of the third as he lifts one foul down the first baseline once again well and josh to your point everything went to plan with those three guys you talked about. I mean, they went quickly through the minors to the big leagues. Right three called. Longy didn't think so, but he takes with him the third strikeout of the day for Nate Pearson. And, of course, the Blue Jays went out and got some experience with young Jim Ryu coming over to their team to anchor the starting rotation this past offseason, so they get some experience to join the young guns. Tenno fouls it off, and that's a great signing. I mean, he's not a guy who is the sexiest name, Hunjin Ryu, but that's a guy who has been very productive over the years for the Dodgers. One, ball, two, One and two on Juan Centeno. 
We are tied at one here in the third. I wonder what the balance of power will look like in the American League East if and when we do play Major League Baseball this year. Hmm. The Red Sox, of course, just look so different. And the Yankees go out and sign Garrett Cole. You figure they're the very prohibited favorites. But Tampa Bay had such a good season last year. They should still be strong. And as we've been talking about this inning, Jim and Mike, had, I think the Blue Jays are a team that's on the rise. I agree. Travis Shaw was a great signing, too, to help those younger players. But, you know, it's all part of me saying that the Red Sox, after all the moves they made and how the division is tougher, they're going to have their hands on so. The Yankees, two guys dealing with some injury issues, most notably Luis Severino undergoing Tommy John, so they got a little bit thinner. This one's popped up left side. And charging and making the catch was the third baseman, Larch. Oh, look, he looked like he didn't uh, know if he caught it, the way he looked at the umpire. <laughs> Two down, right off the grass. Here is Chad De La Guerra. Laguerra was a strikeout victim back in the first inning. So I'll put you on the spot, guys. If you had to rank the American League East right now, I'm going to have you start thinking about it, where you would go. This one's lifted deep to left field. Back on it is Wall, and he makes the grab. So another 1-2-3 inning for Nate Pearson. We are tied at 1 through 3. And now we have a message from our VP of Baseball Operations and Community Relations, Joe Bradley, who made a delivery to one of our partners, Lifespan. Hey guys, this is Joe Bradley from the Paw Sox. I got my colleague here, Rick Medeiros. We're not playing baseball right now at McCoy Stadium, but we're trying to do as much as we can in the community. We're getting ready to donate uh, some of our rain ponchos here that are normally very popular in the months of April and May, and we're going to be donating them to nurses on the front lines uh, from our partners at Lifespan. So uh, we're happy to be showing our support for them. Uh, we're gonna continue to be showing our support for everybody on the front lines in the community amidst this outbreak here. And we wanna keep doing whatever we can to show our support. to see the work there with the ponchos that can be transferred for PPE use during this difficult time. And with it being the fourth, let's turn it back over to Josh Maurer. All right, thank you, Jim. Yeah, that's important stuff. And those ponchos, just a small part of the picture. We'll get into it as our broadcast goes. Paw Stocks as an organization have been doing some yeoman's work trying to help out any way they can in the community during this difficult So it is the middle of the Buffalo here in the fourth against Brian Johnson. Telez flew to center. That ended the first inning. Glad that you could tune in. We are planning on doing this every Thursday early evening, 5 o'clock. This is the second week in a row. And we bring you a Paw Sox baseball game any way we can. from fictitious Center City Field here today. Brian Johnson cuts down Talez. What a beautiful pitch. Kept it away from the lefty. That is his first strikeout. And it went to a breaking ball, which is good to do against Talez. Each team scored its run in the second inning. And here comes Cullen Large, a William & Mary prep. 
So last week it was the Paw Sox against the virtual Red Sox at Fenway. Today, in case you're curious, the reason that it's Paw Sox versus Buffalo as Centeno makes that catch. Nice play. Two out. And Josh Palacios will come up. You can see Pearson with the bigger fastball in this pitcher's duel. But the reason that it's Buffalo today, well, had we had real International League Baseball here on April the 16th, this would have been the matchup at McCoy Stadium. Would have been a 12 o'clock game, right, Josh? Yeah, we'd be on a bus now. Headed on the first road trip of 2020. Palacios doubled and scored the Bison. All right, so Mike and Jim, I was laying the groundwork for us to try to power rank the American League East. So I would go at the current moment, I'd go Yankees one. And I think I would go Tampa Bay two. Then after that, you'd have to kind of have a fight between the Red Sox and the Blue Jays teams that are playing here. What, what say you, who wants to take it first, Jim, you want the first crack? Uh, I'll take the first crack. I think I would agree. Um, with the Yankees, and again, health being a big question mark, but still, even with their injuries, I still would take them. Garrett Cole, that's a huge addition. And then I would go Tampa, too. I mean, that's a, it's a team that's always underrated. And then I would probably go still Red Sox, three, and then Toronto is still four, and then Baltimore, five in the basement. I just think the Red Sox, and we talked about it last week, guys, even Mookie Betts, and I know you lose David Price, too, and even – you know, losing Chris Sale is big. But that lineup should still have runs. They should be near the top in Major League Baseball as far as runs go. It's a two-out walk. Johnson walks Palacios to bring up the veteran Caleb Joseph, Mr. Antonellis. I cheated off Jim. I have the same rankings. I, the top two that you have, I agree. Uh, Severino barely pitched last year for the Yankees. We saw what they did. And I agree with you. I don't think Toronto's pitching overall – is that much better than Boston's. And I think someone will emerge. It always happens. But I, I like their offense going into the season. Joseph popped to first his first time. Swings through the curveball. So nothing into Caleb Joseph, 33 years old. Played in the big leagues the last six years. Nice block by Centeno on ball one. And he's going to be great with Jansen and, and Reese McGuire, two young catchers. Yep. Two guys we've seen play for Buffalo the last few years quite a bit. Johnson takes care of Caleb Joseph. And that'll end the top half of the fourth. Two strikeouts in the inning for BJ. Headed into the bottom of the fourth. And now we're going to take a look back at Alex Richardson, great member of the Paw Sox front office. And what he did yesterday in honor of Jackie Robinson Day. Alex On Taylor. April 15th, all across Major League Baseball, they wear the number 42 in honor of Jackie Robinson Day. We want to preserve his legacy. So I'll read you a book about him called Jackie Robinson, He Led the Way. Written by an author from Shrewsbury, Massachusetts, April Jones Prince, and illustrated by Robert Casilla, and published by the Penguin Group. Jack Roosevelt Robinson was born in a small cabin in Georgia in 1919. Everyone called him Jackie. His family lived and worked on a white man's farm. Slavery had ended more than 50 years before, but often it did not seem that way. Black children could not go to school with white children. Black families could not eat in restaurants with white people or stay in the same hotels. They had to sit in the back of public buses and in the work seats at ballparks. One day, Jackie Robinson would help change all of this. He did it through baseball. And April 15th every year, Jack commemorating his debut with the Brooklyn Dodgers in 1947. Thank you, Alex. Great stuff. If you'd like to check out the whole video, with Alex reading, he led the way. You can check out pawsocks.com and click on the link right on the homepage. Full reading. 
and Alex Richardson for that kid's book, the young youngster's version of Jackie Robinson's story, and perhaps the most impactful story in the history of our sport. It's remarkable, isn't it? C.J. Chatham and then Bobby Dahlbeck and Bruce Nate to follow against Nate Pearson, bottom of the fourth, and what we expected could be a pitcher's duel, and it has. There's a strikeout again for Pearson, and that is his fourth. He's just giving up the one hit, the home run, but that movement up and away. I think it is great that you saw people throughout baseball honoring Jackie Robinson Day yesterday, even though we couldn't have any real game. It was great to see, and I, one tweet that I can remember from yesterday was Chris Archer, who he tweeted at Major League Baseball and said, hey, at MLB, can we still have a Jackie Robinson Day and wear the number 42 when and if we do resume? And I think it just goes to show the impact that still, all these years later, that Jackie Robinson, that name still resonates throughout the game. Dahlbeck takes off speed for a strike, one and two. Well, the last Red Sox player to wear number 42. How about Mo Vaughn? Yeah. That, that ball is caught by Tolez on the pop-up. And now two outs quickly here in the bottom of the fourth. Somebody tweeted a photo of Jackie leaving the ballpark after his first game. And just the look in his face looked like he was overcome a little bit. But it was such a powerful picture, and I'm glad that that person did that. Bruce Ney popped out to Tolez. That came to start the bottom of the second inning for Mr. Castillo. Like you were talking about how all of his major league service time came early after he signed the contract coming from Cuba. This is now the final year of that seven-year contract, if you can believe it. I saw his first pro game in Binghamton, New York, and I can imagine that was uh, a roller coaster of emotions for him. Later on that 2014 season, he was a hero in Governor's Cup championship run that the Paw Sox had. Just come to the team. And he helped them win that series against Durham. Pearson strikes him out. A couple of those in a quick bottom of the fourth inning for this dominant young right-hander, Nate Pearson. So as we head to the fifth, let's take a look at how the Paw Sox have been helping our first responders in the community thanks to our new chef at McCoy Stadium, Chef Tom. We're going to work on that just for a moment as we get you ready for the fifth inning in a 1-1 game. And it's a pitcher's duel between two very different kind of pitchers, power arm of Pearson and the lefty Johnson. Here's Chef Tom. Yep. Meatball subs, the item on the menu there from our McCoy Stadium chef and honoring the people that are doing yeoman's yeoman's throughout our community. Well, let's go to Mike Antonellis here. We've already got an out in the fifth inning. We do. Ruben Tejada, who knocked in the first run, grounds out to, as you see, Chad De La Guerra. We had that story sent to us from Bill Wanless about Chef Tom and guys, uh, meatball subs, you can never go wrong. But what a great thing for him to do to the first responders. Awesome stuff. Ball one misses oh, way inside. Yeah, it certainly is, Mike. And, you know, Tom, we before the stay-at-home order was put into place, and he had cooked a few meals for us as a staff and did an excellent job, along with his wife, Donna, who's a part of the kitchen staff. One ball, one strike. Yeah, I'm looking forward, Jim and Mike, to the press box meals this season. Hopefully, when we <laughs> do get things going at McCoy. Davis with it. Sorry, Mike. Everybody oh, no, go. Favorite right. part of the night. The meal time, pregame. 
Slow roller hit to Dahlbeck. Davis with good speed, and it doesn't matter. Dahlbeck with a great arm. Then there are two outs. Well, you guys know in radio that the two biggest MVPs in radio is your engineer and, of course, people that bring you food. <laughs> True or words haven't been spoken. And for the media, no vegetables, right? <laughs> well, quick inning here. Johnson, and that one's thrown offline, and Espinal will reach, and that should be an error on Dahlbeck. We'll get a view at it here and see what happened, guys. Boy, looked pretty routine. Bobby had time. Santiago Espinal has decent speed, but he had him by, what do you think, Jim? Seven steps with an accurate throw there? I think at least seven steps. I mean, that was a rather routine play. The ball just sailed on him for whatever reason. And yeah, maybe after that great play he made on Davis. Here's the leadoff guy, Alfred. And strike one. He's been hit by a pitch and popped out. Each team with their run in the second inning. Akami tied it with a home run. And Brian Johnson is pitching a great game here today. Look at that. How about that pitch count, too? Yeah. Just 63 pitches here in the fifth inning. Efficient. And he had Alfred way out in front of a changeup. And Brian Johnson, he's a great guy, too. He's had a, a lot go on with him off the field. And that just missed. So a two-out runner at first, Espinal. And again, Dahlbeck busy. Quick throw to second, and that will be the third out. As we have a 1-1 game heading to the bottom of the fifth inning. The Paw Sox Foundation is raising funds to support individuals and organizations at the forefront of the COVID-19 pandemic, including first responders, Healthcare workers, food banks, and food distribution centers, as well as other local charities in need. Please click the image toward the bottom of your screen to donate. We thank you for your contribution to helping the greater Paw Sox community during this unusual time. We ask everyone to stay safe. And also to stay home. That's the other thing, too. Akami with a home run his first time. And hits it into left field. So Josh Ockamy, guys, is two for two. Well, I think the key for Ock is you can see him trying to get the dugout fired up. it has been just swinging early. Gone after the first pitch to get his hits. That he time, too. Yeah. yeah, he goes the opposite way. He took the words right out of my mouth, Josh. He pulled the home run his first time. Now he lines one to left field. And that's what you probably want to see him do more of, get that average up. He is two for two, the only base runners against this hard-throwing right-hander, Nate Pearson. Whitty grinded out his first time. And a foul ball. But let's go back to we talked about the American League East. I mean, the Yankees were chomping at the bit to get ready with Garrett Cole. And who knows when we'll see him again. Foul James back. Paxton injured yeah. again as well. Throw that in with Severino. It's a good thing they spent all that money for Garrett Cole. Well, when he stays alive, good swing there. It would seem to me that that was pretty much virtually accepted as money well spent. And I know it was a lot of money, but the way Garrett Cole was the last couple of years in Houston, it's hard to figure that you could want a, a better right-hander at his age in his prime than what you get with Garrett Cole right now in 2020. I remember when he was drafted and there were baseball people saying this guy will be better than Strasburg. And I, I at the time I said, you got to be kidding me, but might be right. And Woody goes down on a good fastball. That's a tough one to hit guys. Even though it's kind of in your eye level there, it's just too much velocity. When you elevate a fastball like that up above the belt, it looks enticing, but when you throw it as hard, as Pearson does, and he pinpointed it up and in, it's almost impossible to try to barrel up. He is fan six, including Zue, who takes the ball outside. Zue covering the ground in center field. It still looks weird to see CF next to his name. Longtime infielder. 
but he's played himself, guys, into a utility man. I talked about this last week in our Thursday night broadcast. I really like him in the outfield. I think as much, maybe if not better, than when I've seen him playing shortstop in any one of the middle infield positions or second base. I, I, I think he looks like a natural center field. I agree, and I think he's someone who likes to be challenged, and he has really stepped up to this. Count is now even 98 on the fastball. Oh, guys, I think you have to give a lot of credit because the Paw Sox, obviously, probably at the direction of their superiors in the Red Sox system, have had some guys who were infielders play the outfield the last couple of years. As you see, a strikeout there, one being Sam Travis, Jansen Witte towards the tail end of the year, saw some time in the outfield, and Zue Lin. I think a lot of credit has to go to Paw Sox coach Bruce Crabb. He's a guy who spends a lot of time with these guys when they're learning new positions in. I think he gets a lot of credit or should get a lot of credit because they've done quite well for themselves, these infielders that have gone out to the outfield. Yeah, and it helps having Billy McMillan as a former outfielder, but that's where the coaches earn their money in the minors. That's part of what they got to do. And But you're right, Josh, about Zue. He's, he really looks good out there. I remember talking to Bruce Crabb about Michael Chavis playing second base in the major leagues when he had never even played second base in the minor leagues and how proud Bruce Crabb was him of the way he was able to make that transition last year when he got called up to Boston. I think even Crabby would have admitted he was a little unsure as to how that experiment would work out. Longy hits a high fly down on the right field line, curling into foul territory. Davis makes the catch. So Pearson gives up a leadoff single and goes strikeout, strikeout, fly out. And we have a 1-1 game after five innings. We're going to swing things over to Jim Kane. I think we're going to hit any questions we have from the chat, guys. We certainly got some questions here, guys. And let's start with this first one that's sent in. Question one, who would win in a home run derby between the three of us? Who wants to take the first step at that? I just know who would not win, and that would be me. So you guys can fight it out for the title. Well, I, yeah, Mike, I think you have sneaky power. Yeah, I mean, I've been playing the video game a lot. I'm learning launch angle more and more. Uh, I t take some phantom swings in my apartment. So I, I would love. We should do it. What, why not? If we're, we're back soon, let's the three of us try it. It'd be great. Tell that you would what, be I great. Have an advantage if we could do it at Fenway because I'm. Teaching, oh so. yeah. Yeah, I could play Pepper with the pesky pole. You guys might have to deal with the green monster. And as far as I go, I was more of a singles-doubles guy, so I think I would definitely lose a home run derby between the three of us. Question number two that we have, what is your favorite restaurant to visit on any road trip city, courtesy of our public address announcer, Ben DeCastro, tuning in? That was his question. Well, I guess as the one guy who has been lucky enough to travel the IL circuit of the three of us, I, oh man, that's some good ones. I have, since we're playing Buffalo right now, I have to point out the greatest Buffalo wing spot in the world. I'm, I swear to it. This yeah. place called Gabriel's Gate on Allen Road. They call it Allentown, Buffalo. Gabriel's Gate. If you get the wings, you get them hot, extra crispy, with an order for French fries on the side, telling you it's heaven. You get right about now. One final question, it looks like, as you see Raynal Espinal taking over in the sixth inning. Just want to get to this quickly. Mike, I know you probably haven't had a chance to meet everybody yet, but Josh, for you and I, favorite front office employee to work with? <laughs> that's, a, that's a loaded question right there, Jimbo. <laughs> I have well, to say everybody to, to, to kiss up to everyone. <laughs> Double barrel action you see down in the Paw Sox bullpen to begin this sixth inning, too. Can we plead the Espinal. fifth? <laughs> How about everybody? Why not, right? I mean, it's a great group of people to work with in all seriousness. And, you know, it's a pleasure coming to work every day with everybody. So it might be a cop-out of an answer, but 
That's probably mine. First wall takes down and in. Well, the way that things have been going right now, I'm being, getting to know everybody from their houses, <laughs> their background of where they live. It's been all outside. On yeah, our, it's uh, a strange, uh, strange transition for you, Mr. Ancelis, <laughs> coming from those years. And before we ever get to broadcast a real game, house, housebound. Spoons lifted down the right field line, but foul off the bat of that spin all. Yeah, I think my shadow's getting sick of me here. <laughs> this one is in the air to right center. Racing over goes Lynn. He goes back onto the warning track, and he makes the catch. Well, there again, the range for Zhu Wei Lin. He looked like a natural on the route back to haul in that long fly out. Well, guys, interesting choice here by the Paw Sox staff to take Brian Johnson out of this game. Five innings, he was cruising. Gave up just the one run back in the second inning. Only two hits. Only two hits that Buffalo has in this game. Game when they got their run back in the second. But otherwise, I thought Brian Johnson looked great. Les drives one out to deep right. Castillo is back there to make the catch. So some loud contact here for the Bisons off Espinal, but nothing to show for it. And I think if you got four to five innings from Johnson in the big league games, you're going to take that. I think Brian would be very happy with today as well. Johnson only walked one man. That was... Palacios back in the fourth inning and gave up the one run, as Josh mentioned. Down base is clear for Cullen Large, who pulls one on the ground right side. Akami takes it to the bag himself, and it's a one, two, three, top of the sixth for Reno Espinal. One and two do up for Pawtucket. As we move to the bottom half of the sixth inning, Juan Santana leading it off. He is 0 for 1 after popping out in the third. And another great shot there. That's the home plate umpire vantage point. And Pearson missing downstairs, still throwing hard at 97 with activity down in the bullpen, however, for Buffalo. Yeah, the Paw Sox probably were hoping that Nate Pearson would be removed from the game. Not quite yet, although A.J. Cole, one of the guys up. A lot of big league time for Cole over the years. The lazy fly to center that's controlled by Alford for the first out. 73 pitches now for Pearson. This uh, game being played in early April, so you're figuring these guys aren't fully stretched out yet, which is why, oh, 75 to 80 pitches probably maximum. And De La Guerra taking a strike as you see the sh shadows pretty much taking up the entire infield at this point. And De La Guerra pulls one down the line, racing over goes Davis, and he can't get it just out of his reach. As you talked about Jonathan Davis last year making a number of highlight reel catches, almost had one there. Right in the air to left, and that's an easy play for a wall for out number two. And there's so much value playing someone like him in right as well. You, you think of he's a natural center fielder, but he's going to steal so many extra base hits playing on the corners. Two down for C.J. Chatham. Pearson, two guys. I mean, we've talked a lot about his stuff, but his build, 6'6", 245, he just looks like a guy who can anchor a rotation for years to come. I think they're kind of hoping on it. He's had injury issues, especially earlier in his minor league career. He missed the full season. But if healthy, you're right. This guy looks like he could be a horse. Yeah, and then there's that, tempting, there's that tempting thing too, Josh, to make him a closer. They, they 
did that with Aaron Sanchez. They weren't sure what to make of him. Pulled off by Chenham, and it's still two and two. But he's, uh, to me, a starter. And he's their Vladimir Guerrero as a pitcher. They're hoping he's the big-time guy. Strike three called. Went off speed on Chatham, and that is the 10th strikeout for Pearson. And we are through six in a tie ball game. Now we'll take a look at Ocean State Job Lot donating food to local families in need. Over 1,200 cars drove through the McCoy Stadium parking lot last Wednesday morning as a bit of a food drive through as you will, as you take a look at some of the food that was handed out courtesy of our friends at Ocean State Job Lot. A great shot there. Paw Sox employees helping handing out food to people in need during this difficult time. And again, we thank our partners at Ocean State Job Lot for coming up with a terrific idea. So we move to the seventh and back with the play-by-play. -play. Here's Josh Maurer. Thank you, Jim. And we have talked a lot throughout our broadcast here this evening about what the Paw Sox are doing to try to help through the coronavirus era. And there's a great example of it with that food drive last week. And they're hoping, I know, to continue that partnership with the Ocean State Job Lot as the weeks move along and we continue to try to fight our way through this tough time. Yeah, Milk Monday at McCoy's coming up. Raynell Espinal, second inning. He came on in the sixth and retired the side in order. Josh Palacios. He was on base twice against Johnson, a double and a walk. In the left field, slicing away from Longy. That's a fair ball. That's the third time that Palacios will reach, and he slides in with a double. Well, this kid... Former fourth-round pick out of Auburn, who played mostly at double-A last year. Palacios has been the best hitter for Buffalo here today. Yes, the fifth hitters on both teams. It has been. It was a bit of an inside-out swing, too, and he drove it the opposite way. So the go-ahead run in scoring position, and there's nobody out. Saw so a lot of him last year, Josh and Jim uh, Palacios. Good player. Hit 266 at Double A New Hampshire last year. He has two of the three Buffalo hits today. Caleb Joseph is 0 for 2. But that really is hitting 346. I believe the league average was 220 or 230. It was something, it was historic low. Joseph late. You know, Mike, last year, Double A hitting was, as you said, at record low numbers while triple a was almost record high numbers playing with the major league baseball that was so talked about and that time i joined you guys last year i got those statistics from the international league and i couldn't believe it records oh, we, across the board jim and i had to live it <laughs> two two is popped into shallow right i don't think this is going to advance the runner Castillo makes the catch, and no chance for Palacios to tag. So that's an unproductive first out of the inning by Caleb Joseph. Josh, remember that first game I was with you? I, I could not believe the difference in the baseball. I think it's interesting. If and when we do play this, are the baseballs going to be remedied back to something that we might consider You know, guys, too, there was talk last year towards the tail end of the year and into the postseason. There were some playoff teams at the big league level that thought that maybe Major League Baseball was, you know, messing with the balls again to try to not juice them as much because there was so much talk about it throughout the course of the regular season. That one ripped into left center. That's a base hit by Ruben Tejada. And Buffalo takes the lead here in the seventh. Tejada with a run-scoring single. Palacios crosses the plate, and the Bisons have a two-to-one lead. Now well, they got a pitch up, guys, and he's got two RBI singles, both to left field. Yeah, how about that? There have been four Buffalo hits, and 
each time it's been a double by Palacios, and then he was singled in two batters later by Tejada. Little symmetry in this simulation game. Jonathan Davis now against Espinal. Renel Espinal, guy who came over from the Yankees. In fact, we've seen him pitching with Scranton Wilkes-Barre. Now in the Red Sox organization for his year. Fastball at the bottom of the zone gets him ahead of Davis, one and two. And the Red Sox have taken a lot of flyers on these Yankee farmhands because they have a ton of arms. You figured that you would see Espinal pitching for the Paw Sox if and when the season does start. That's a nice over-the-shoulder catch by Akami, who's been so busy with the glove. Two out here in the seventh inning. And now we get the rare treat of Espinal versus Espinal. <laughs> and Espinal will win this one. It is Santiago <laughs> batting, Raynell pitching. Say so I could bring all my bad jokes now, just for just for the first year here, and then I'll have to get rid of them. This batter, Santiago, actually was drafted by the Red Sox, and he has a base hit. Santiago Espinal gets the better of Raynell Espinal. Yeah, the Steve Pierce trade. He's just leaving pitches up in the strike zone. That's what he did on the pitch to Tejada and leaves another one about bell tie here to Espinal. Top of the order, Anthony Alford, who's over two, has also been hit by a pitch. Three hits in the inning for the Bisons, who taken back the lead. Yeah, guys, even in a simulation, fastballs knee-high to these hitters. They'll still hit it, even in a video game. Ripped to the right side, but that's a second baseman, Chad De La Guerra. That'll end the inning, and the Paw Sox will have to try to come from behind again. Hey, even though this is a simulation game, we're going to keep with tradition what else would you do at the seventh inning stretch other than enjoy some take me out to the ball game? That's a great, great pitch by Pearson, similar to the one that he struck C.J. Chatham out on that high and tight fastball, really got it in in that perfect spot. Rusne has popped to first and struck out. 
in our opening day anyway game last Thursday. Bruce had a big game virtually, went three for five. We know very well this guy can hit. When all is said and done, be one of the all-time hit leaders in Pawtucket Red Sox history. Long time playing here. About him, too, guys, is that he just makes it look so easy. He's got such a smooth swing, and when he's going right, he just looks like he is in total control. Out of play, two and two. Yep, strong. I mean, the, the builds, but you're right. He is a natural hitter. Let's see if he can tie this game with one swing. Spoiled the fastball. We saw last inning that Buffalo had double-barreled action getting ready in its bullpen, but they stick with Pearson. And it'll be another full count. Well, these have been two of the longest plate appearances against Pearson all day. Dahlbeck then Rusne to begin this inning. Now the payoff coming. Got him looking. What a pitch. Boy, Pearson is saving his best for last, isn't he, guys? Yeah, fastball right down the middle. Getting Dahl back on a 3-2 pitch where he broke his bat. Getting Rusne looking. And here's the man who's provided the only Paw Sox run today, Josh Ock. He has the only two hits for Pawtucket. And you'd have to think this is maybe the final batter that Pearson will face. Try to change up one and one. Yeah, close to 100 pitches, as you see. Akami takes it low. 97 miles an hour still as we get later into this. Thing. It's impressive to see out of this right arm. Oh, Josh. Yeah, it's almost like Justin Verlander, like in a way where he saves his best and his hardest yeah. for the end. Akami in the right field. Has he done it again? He'll watch it sail. And the Paw Sox have tied it up. Josh Akami's second solo home run of the day. Two to two in the seventh. Wow, what a ball game he's having. He's been the star for the Paw Sox. How crazy is this? All three hits. Oh, we talked about it after his second hit, guys. When he's hot, he is really hot. There aren't many guys that can hit the way he can when he's locked in, and he is certainly locked in here today. Yeah, and I have to think that Buffalo is probably second-guessing leaving Pearson in to face Akami in that situation. They are going to take him out of the game. Unfortunately, it's a sour taste in his mouth. Well, the fans here at neutral site City Center City Field giving him an ovation. He is summoned out of the bullpen. But oh, Josh, you could see that he wanted that pitch in, but he just left it too much over the plate and Akami sat on it and crushed it. And I, I think, too, with a young guy like Pearson, you wanted to see if you were the Bison could finish this seventh inning going right through the heart of the order. There were just three really good at-bats against him. He got the first two out, but Akami takes him deep and we are tied again. So now it's Jansen Witte. He greets A.J. Cole. We've seen a lot of A.J. Cole. First time Washington Nationals man, and pitched quite a bit in Syracuse. Would he takes that one just off the plate? So six and two thirds inning, three hits and two runs off of Pearson. Whitty on the ground is second, played by Santiago Espinal, and that ends the frame. So Whitty is out. But it was this man, Akami, 
his second blast of the day. And we hope you're enjoying this, folks, on our Twitch broadcast. We've got a 2-2 game. Postock should have a new pitcher coming in for the eighth, I would imagine, to tell you about it. Here's Mike Antonellis. All right, Josh, thanks a lot. And the fifth hitters in both game, at both sides here have scored the runs, Palacios and Akami. Forrest Wall leads it off. He's 0 for 3, and he was robbed of a hit back in the first inning on a great catch by Nick Longy. What a view there, and see that warehouse and right? Espinal is back out there for a second frame, and he misses high for ball one. Wall, Telez, and Large for the Toronto affiliate. Still a good crowd on hand. There's a strike. But Josh Ockamy has been the man for Pawtucket. Two homers and a single. I'm That's a little surprised. In. Sorry, Mike. Surprised that Espinal gets a third inning. Maybe as surprised as I was that Pearson stayed in as long as he did in the seventh. Postox surprisingly staying with Rennell Espinal. Two balls, two strike. Even in the simulations, we can second guess. There's a diving play by Akami. Knocks it down. His throw to first is late. Wall is fast, but a great effort by Akami. And it's, as you can see, the virtual official score says infield hit. Certainly the right scoring decision. Akami has been a vacuum over there at first base most of the day, but not that time. Very interesting yeah. motion by the first base umpire, putting the both <laughs> arms straight up as opposed to straight out to the side. Interesting take on the safe call. Well, Telez is making sure uh, he doesn't have a broken bat. <laughs> he is 0 for 3. I got to tell you, Mike, I do feel safer in second-guessing any managed decisions in our <laughs> virtual broadcast than I would in an actual broadcast. Yeah, and we can get on the official score, too. He won't know. <laughs> well, guys, this is huge here. You got Telez. We know his power. And with a go-ahead run at first, this is a big guy. Also someone you can double up. One and one. Now, Josh, I remember he hit that home run off a position player, right, in a long game? It was. Great memory, Mike. That was several I, years. What, you know, I was listening was? to it. It was Mike Miller. It was Miller. Mike Miller, yeah. <laughs> this and one's outside. You, yeah, Mike, for a couple of years, ended up becoming the emergency pitcher for the Boston oh. when they needed in those long extra inning type games. And Telez hit one, and Mike was not happy. <laughs> now, that was the July 4th game, right? No, it, it nope. wasn't, but... There was a big crowd. I think it okay. might have been a, a fireworks night in Buffalo, and Telez won it. And, you know, Mike Miller is a competitor. He didn't want that to happen, even though he's throwing, you know, 55 mile an hour tossing. And the 2 2 pitch, Telez with a foul. I remember following that game, and I had duties with Portland after, and I, I looked at my phone. You guys were still playing, so I streamed it and listened to you on the way home. Double play ball to short. Chatham, De La Guerra over to Akami, and that was huge. That erases Wall, who's got speed. So if you had him in scoring position, that's not what Pawtucket wanted. And they got the pitcher's best friend. Perfectly turned. How about that barehanded by De La Guerra? Yeah. I think it's interesting, too, today in our simulation. Paw Sox not employing the overshift on guys like Telez. Otherwise, that would have been a hit. And that's a ball outside. And just to let people know, in these simulated games, they do shift. They're just not doing it here. Large is hitless. And that one to left field is a base hit. Not anymore. So the second hit of the inning. And, well, Espinal has worked around five hits guys he has given up one run but five hits could be a lot worse it's a good piece of hitting here by cullen large he went down he hit that almost off his shoe tops and yeah, we'll see if he's running here with two outs in the eighth as palacios good hitter though takes a strike two doubles and a walk he scored both runs as you see 
I continue to be surprised that Raynell Espinal stays in this game. How about you, Jim? Very surprised. The 44 pitches. It's a guy who was a starter, so he's used to it. But in this situation, it's interesting that he is still out there. Good spot to send the runner here with a count 0-2 two and two outs. If he's thrown out, Palacios gets a fresh at bat in the ninth. Runner does not go, and it is outside. And the appeal, the safe call has two different meanings in baseball. <laughs> one, two. And that one is hit down the first baseline and foul. Looks like we're going to see, well, maybe we'll see a new Buffalo pitcher in the bottom of the eighth. And Palacio stays alive. So, guys, how about this? The fifth hitters today in this game, Palacios and Akami. Yeah, I think Palacios, no question, has been the most impressive Buffalo hitter. A couple of doubles, tough Good. walk. And he lines one into center field. That's going to drop for a base hit. Third hit of the inning and back-to-back -back singles after a double play ball. And Buffalo stays alive here in the eighth. Uh how about this, guys? Mike, you talked about these five hitters and Josh, too. They have reached in each of their plate appearances. Palacios, three for three with a walk now. And what are the odds of that? Well, now the move is made. Billy McMillan calls on Adam Lau. Now, Mike, you know Adam very well from the time he's pitched with the Portland Sea Dogs. We saw Lau pitch very impressively in that exhibition sim game at Fenway last Thursday. He struck out the side in the one inning that he pitched. A terrific competitor, and he'll do anything asked. Sometimes he's got to eat innings. He's been that guy that might have to stay out there an extra inning. He's got a terrific middle name. It's Adam Forrest Lau. Caleb Joseph, the veteran, takes the ball up and in. For whatever it's worth, in that game last Thursday, he struck out in order Xander Bogart, Mitch Chavis. And trying to get a big leaguer out here and Caleb Joseph, who is hitless, but he's a threat. See Buffalo with two on here. Three hits in the inning. Good pitch, a slider. And look at it, it's getting intense here at the ballpark. Fans in the backgrounds, off their phones and cheering. The third Pawtucket pitcher. And a swing and a miss. He went up there with a fastball. Look at the hair there, guys, for Adam Lau. I don't know about either of you, but by the time, if this stay-at-home order stays for a while, my hair is going to be looking like that. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're not kidding. <laughs> it's going to be for a me, line I mean, at the... Yeah, you guys keep it shorter than I do. One, two, swing and a miss. He struck him out with a good pitch away. And that will do it for Buffalo. Despite three hits in the top of the eighth, Adam Lau gets out of it on that swing and miss. And he's pumped up. And we got Sweet Caroline here at Center City Field. Presented by Warmtown. We
All right, a terrific version right there as we are in the bottom of the eighth inning. Stuwe Lin, Nick Longy, and Juan Centeno will bat. What would a Red Sox or a Paw Sox game be without Sweet Caroline between the top and bottom of the eighth inning? I mean, you have to have it, right? Even Is at it? Center City Field, <laughs> we, we do it. <laughs> You know There's what's crazy, guys? I, I've heard it in other ballparks in the minors, and I'm surprised they play it. Non-Red Sox affiliates? Yeah, not the hands-washing hands, the Sweet Caroline. That's high, yeah. But it's a, it's a song that's good to get up in between innings and sing. Lynn Longy and Centeno against A.J. Cole, and Zue brushed off the plate. So Pawtucket's hoping this is the last time they bat. They want to run here and then win it. And did that hit Zue? He goes down, and he looks out at A.J. Cole. He's not trying to hit him. Well, this is a spot where you'd feel certainly like a walk could be as good as a hit. Sure. And Zue will get it. A.J. Cole not happy there. He got the final out of the seventh, but Lynn is the go-ahead run. And we'll see if uh, maybe Nick Longy sacrifices here. We'll see if they play small ball. Well, this is a great at-bat by Zue as we take a look at the pitch sequence. Zue takes this just up and away for ball four, and that's the first walk of the game by Buffalo pitching guys. In and, and six and two-thirds innings, Mike, he had no walks and nine strikeouts. Amazing. That's a great first at bat of an inning, considering the situation. Strike one to Longy. Great at bat, too, guys, because the previous pitch, he went down, and Zue able to lay off a pitch that ended up going to the outside part of the plate that was close. A.J. Cole throwing back-to-back -back front door sliders here to Longy, who's 0 for 2. There's another breaking ball, and that is hammered to left and deep. Back is Wall, and he makes the catch. And Lynn has to get back. So Longy just missed that one. He threw him three in a row. And that one was a hanger, and he just missed it. Boy, we were wondering, would it be a sacrifice situation for Billy McMillan? He let Longy swing away, and he almost did some serious damage. There have been a couple of balls since. Centeno rounds out the order, takes it low, and we know Lynn can run, so we'll see if Billy rolls the dice at all here. Centeno handles the bat pretty well. Do a little hit and run, maybe? Yeah. And he swings away and hits it in the air to left center field, but Alfred, who's a quick outfielder, makes the catch, and they have got a great outfield here of Wall, Alfred, and Davis. You're right. Not a lot going to fall between those guys. Three men who can run and cover a lot of grounds. So the inning that started so promisingly now has. To... And De La Guerra, this is a guy with power in the leadoff spot, and they pitch out, nothing happening. So now you have to run, right? I would think so. Yeah. And that's definitely the way that Buffalo was expecting, pitching out on that first one. And it's 2-0 on De La Guerra. He's 0 for 3. Go ahead, run it first with two outs. A.J. Cole's pitch misses. So I'd does he get the green light? Yeah. Yeah, you read my mind. I'd let him swing away here. I would, too. Chatham's on deck. And that is just a bit high. So two walks in the inning. And now the potential winning run in scoring position. And Chatham will give it a try. Well, here's a guy who's happy to see. He was really dominated by Pearson, who struck him out the last few times he batted. And strike one from A.J. Cole. 
Now, Chatham has a great awareness of the play. Hits the ball a lot to right center. And he grounds one foul down the right field line. What a ball game we have for you here in our simulation, the 0-2. And he hits a roller to second base, and A.J. Cole gets out of the eighth, stranding two. And it's 2-2 after eight innings as we have this message coming up on Paws and Socks. We send you warm greetings from the Paw Sox Clubhouse at McCoy Stadium in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, where today we're going to tell you the story of Paws and Sox, the two mascots of the Paw Sox, and as you can see, two happy, healthy polar bears. Where did they come from? How did their families choose to come to New England? What's their story? Well, we used our imagination and we came up with the Adventures of Paws and Socks. And Adventures of Paws Why and Socks is available at pawsocks.com. So it's a 2-2 game as we head to the top of the ninth. And for our second simulation in a row, Jim Kane has a chance to call a walk-off hit. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mike Antonellis. There is activity, a pair of lefties, as you see there, Osich. And Jeffrey Springs warming up for Pawtucket down in the bullpen after Adam Lau came in in relief of Raynell Espinal last inning, and he struck out Caleb Joseph with the pair on. And Josh Morris, after that inning ended, you go back to the game last week that we played, the simulation at Fenway, Adam Lau has faced four batters and has struck them all out so far. Having a great April is Mr. Lau. <laughs> Virtually. Behind in the count, two and one on Ruben Tejada, who's had a good afternoon. Couple of RBI singles for Tejada. Yeah, we've only had two men with a run batted in. Tejada has both for Buffalo, Akami both for Pawtucket. Now with the 2-2 pitch to Tejada. Just south of the knees. Jonathan Davis waiting on deck. Bottom third of this Buffalo order. And what's been, as we've pointed out, a really good game. Swung on and missed. Make that five straight strikeouts for Adam Lau. One out in the ninth. Unbelievable, huh, Mike? And you saw him <laughs> a lot in Portland. He's not actually known as a strikeout pitcher. No. He, he can have times where he, he might, but you're right. Mr. Simulation here. <laughs> <laughs> Davis goes after the first pitch and hits it back up the middle. So a one-out base runner and good speed aboard. In the form of Jonathan Davis. Yeah, you figure that a base stealing opportunity in play here on that ground ball. How about this? The hits in this game are now nine to three. Buffalo has had the significant advantage in base run. I've left seven men on base. Just making a quick count here through the box score. Tiago Espinal's one for three. He singled his last time. There's a strike. Good pitch from Lau. They have seven hits off the Pawtucket bullpen. Two plus innings, but one run. There goes, throw down from his knees, and in time! What a throw by Juan Centeno, his second caught stealing of the day. This one, the most impressive. Oh, boy, is that a close play, too. And you can see De La Guerra slapped the tag, and I thought that maybe Davis got his hand in first. How did 
to short. Chatham a low throw dug out by Akami in time. So Lau ends up facing the minimum, and the Paw Sox will come to bat with a chance to win it in the bottom of the ninth with the meat of the order due up. Bobby Dahlbeck set to lead it off. As you see, there is double barrel action in the Buffalo pen as there was in the Pawtucket bullpen. A.J. Cole staying out there. And off, he's been quiet as you see. 0 for 3 in this simulation. Next pitch outside to Dahlbeck. Jackson McClelland and Brian Baker. Baker was a really good closer last season for Buffalo after he came up from double A. This is strike to Dahlbeck. You look at AJ. You know, Bobby Cole. has one thing in mind, right? Oh, yeah. This one's popped up in the infield. Racing down comes to Les, and he makes the catch in fair territory for out number one of the ninth. I was going to say, A.J. Cole, 79 big league appearances over the last four seasons, most of that with the Nationals. But last year, he was a good pitcher for Cleveland. Pick up in the offseason by Toronto. But Cole, he's, he's a guy who can really be successful. And he's been good since he's coming into this game. On a no on Rusne Castillo, who is 0 for 3 thus far. He lines one down the right field line, and that's a base hit. Davis gets it in quickly, and the Paw Sox with the winning run aboard here in the ninth. Oh, we know so well how Roosnake can go the opposite way. That's a swing we've seen time and time again in his years with the Paw Sox. And I think, Mike, I can read your mind. You were going to say how important it is to have a guy on base for this guy, Bakami. Yeah, and also uh, having Davis in right field, he prevents Castillo from going to second. He got to that quickly. Play of Josh Akami's first home run. Feet on the first, 390 on the second. Can he do it again and win it here in the ninth? And how about that was the first Paw Sox hit for anybody in this game other than Akami. That one Roosman just got. That is a great stop right there by Joseph Castillo, hanging tight at first. One misses outside. Jansen Woody waiting on deck and take a chance and maybe send Castillo here, or is it not worth it with the day that Akami's at? No, I don't think so. Bruce Nay's not much of a base stealer at this point in his career either. I was a little surprised Ockham, he didn't just swing at that 3-0. There's a good pitch and a strike. So Cole fell behind 3-0 and has battled to fill the count to 3-2. and Yeah, you're right, Jim. That was not a 3-1 cookie that you think you're getting. That was a little bit low and away. Now I would start the runner. Yeah. Off. Strike three called over the inside corner. Akami unhappy but enough speed pitch to get him looking for the second out boy what a great comeback there by aj cole behind 3-0 in the counts anson witty takes downstairs and you throw him a breaking ball to strike him out but he down the right field line but foul We're going to find out, by the way, if MLB The Show simulation has the same minor league extra inning rules as the oh, yeah. huge, you know, <laughs> where they have the automatic. Good point. They do have the free batter rule. I know that. They won't let you take a guy out if you bring him in. Jansen Whitty's hoping we don't get to find out the answer to the Tim. Let's count for Whitty here. 
fouls off to 3 1. Got a good pitch to hit, and it looked like he just missed it. Well, now with a count full and two outs, this will give Castillo a head start. Inside for ball four. That one not close. Woody aboard. And now the winning run up to scoring position for Pawtucket for Zue Lin. And we're going to have a pitching change here as. Ken Huckabee will make the move to Brian Moran, who comes in in a tough spot here for Buffalo. Well, you got the left-handed hitter, Lynn Du up. So you figured that manager Huckabee was going to think about bringing in a southpaw in the matchup. A.J. Cole ended up with three walks. And with that winning run at second base, what a great spot for Zue Lin to try to be a hero. Been struck out twice against Pearson, one of many Pawtucket hitters that didn't fare too well against the right-hander, but can be the hero for Pawtucket here in the ninth. Outside and high. Boy, A.J. Cole really walked the tightrope. He gave up four base runners, but right now nothing on his line. And swings and misses. Couldn't time the slider from Moran. This again went back to that slider and Zue down one and two. Pitched 10 games in the big leagues with the Marlins last year. Down the right field line. Davis is over. He's not going to get it. It hits off the wall. Castillo round second and he is in to score the winning run. In with a walk-off double, and the Paw Sox win it in the bottom of the ninth. Way Lynn looked fooled on a couple of sliders, and he ends up the hero here today for the Paw Sox. Jim Kane, it's your it's your walk-off again. You're the man of the. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have to stick to the way that we break down the innings here, Josh. How about Raphael Devers last week, Zue Lin here tonight? That was impressive because, I, and I know, Mike, you can talk to this as Josh Akami is very rightfully chosen as our Paw Sox player of the game. I, I, Mike, Zue has not always been the best at hitting against left-handed pitching. And Buffalo decided to bring in the lefty to face him. That made all the sense of but Zue was able to win the game regardless. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think you second guess what Buffalo did because you look at the two sliders that he couldn't get to. Those were excellent pitches by Moran. I think that's a part of the development of Zue Lin that's gotten a lot better. He's really improved, and it came with two outs. And go figure, guys, even in a simulation, that single came after a two-out walk, which you guys, you, we hear about it all the time from the coaches. What a game. For the yeah. second straight week, we have a walk-off, guys. The final, this one going Pawtucket's way, 3-2 to two here today at Center City Field over the Bisons. The win going Adam Lau, who was really good coming with runners on in the eighth inning. A.J. Cole with the loss and, of course, player of the game, Josh Akami. What an afternoon for him. But Zhu Wei Lin was the hero in this one. Well, guys, this was fun for a second week in a row. And again, as we said, we'll make this a weekly thing on Thursdays. And we didn't have a player this week, but we are trying to lock down some players in the weeks to come, as we've talked about before. And, you know, some of them include Kyle Hart, CJ Chatham, Mike Shawarin. We may even get Tanner Houck back in future broadcasts, along with maybe even other members of the Paw Sox front office, too. So, this will be a lot of fun, and it's been off to a good start so far. No question about it, Jim. We've had two games decided in the final at bat, and I think that's what really will help provide a lot of fun color is when we bring those Paw Sox players and maybe even coaches on to come. We look forward to bringing you as much inside info about the players, the team, what they're doing to get through this downtime as we can in the, in the weeks that come and uh, we hope that you'll join in with us as you have fun to be with you guys and talk baseball too 
when he is. Well, again, our final scores you see there. Pawtucket 3 and Buffalo 2 for my broadcast partners, Josh Maurer and Mike Antonellis. I'm Jim Kane saying so long from Center City Field. We will talk to you next week.